This episode of Lord John Lander includes conversation about sexual violence that some listeners may find distressing. Support resources are available from RAIN.org, including a confidential helpline for those in the U.S. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Welcome to Lord John Lander, the Outlander podcast for Lord John fans, where we talk about all things Outlander, but especially about Jamie and his Sassanac. And sometimes we talk about Claire, too. For however long it takes, we'll lead you on a journey so chaotic, you'll question every life choice that led you to be here today. And like the Hotel California, you can check out any time, but you can never leave. We may not be the Outlander podcast you wanted, but we will be the Outlander podcast you didn't know you needed. Now, before we get into it, this is your one and only warning that show and book spoilers are lurking around every corner. We're going to spoil stuff from future seasons, future books, and our own brains. Remember, if you can't prove our headcanon didn't happen, then we can only assume that it did. If you make it through the episode in one piece, we'd love to hear from you. Send us your burning questions, wild theories, thick prompts, flattering compliments, or whatever's on your mind. You can contact us on Twitter and Tumblr at Lord John Lander or on our website at lordjohnlander.wordpress.com where you'll also find our archived episodes, teasers, thick wrecks, and more. Hello, welcome back to Lord John Lander. We're your hosts. I'm Mistress Pandora. You can call me Pan. And it's Beth. Today we have episode 204, La Dame Blanche. Fun fact, I just realized, because I've got the wiki page pulled up. You know how they've got, like, this is an episode in Outlander. You may be looking for X. Yeah, There's one on this one, too. And I was thinking, you may be thinking of Claire's nickname. No, it links to the mythological feature creature figure. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) (laughs) It links to the mythological figure page for LaDonna Blanche. that's interesting. Yeah. Random little tidbit. Throw that okay, out there. Okay, but then when I click on that, it it takes me to stuff about Outlander anyway. So. Well, yeah, no, it's still part of the, the fandom page. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, I got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Interesting. I thought it was going to be, like, all about the mythology, and you know how that, like, no. tickled me immediately. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, let's check it out and dissect that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming it was probably the same, the same person. There's like one or two really dedicated people who just do a kick-ass job on this wiki. Like really yeah. kick-ass. If you're listening, thank you. We appreciate it because we reference the site every single week. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought of something that I think we should talk about before we even dive into the episode, because I'm sure sure people are going to want to hear about it, talk about it, whatever. So they announced um, a bunch of a bunch of cast members for season seven. Um, Yeah. And I'm trying to get to their Twitter page on my computer here. One second. Outlander stars. So. Yeah, so they announced a bunch of um, people for season seven, so we can probably, like, make some predictions about some storylines that we're definitely going to see, if if you want to indulge that right now. Sure. Um, I know I'm bringing this on you with no warning. Yeah, yeah, Um, none whatsoever. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Sorry. Live hand reaction. (laughs) You know how my brain works. Um, (laughs) So I I did see it. I didn't pay too terribly close attention to it because i think i was i think i was riding in a car um but i saw kree is back kree is back as ian um, which makes me so and, happy and yet so very uh, fucking sad <laughs> yeah, so fucking sad. yeah i um absolutely i you know it's because we know that laura donnelly was never was pretty much guaranteed she was never going to come back she's pretty much just said that so yeah. i wasn't sure if they were still going to have the storyline so if you haven't read ahead in the books and i know we don't usually do spoiler warnings but skip ahead a little bit here because we're going to definitely in this segment talk about 
stuff that's going to happen in future books. So um, I thought maybe they would have Jenny die instead of Ian. That would have um, been really simple, but less like. But it, but then there's a lot of complications with that, right? Yeah. Because because Jenny is still there throughout, you know, um, the future books. And I am really very much hoping. So they recast Jenny. So I didn't say that, but yeah. they recast Jenny. Um, I don't know anything about this actor, Kristen Atherton. Um, she's got dark hair. So, you know, we're starting off strong. That's <laughs> Well, I did see Stephen Creep tweeted that like that we're going to like her. Oh, good. So, um, got got yeah. his vote of confidence. Uh, so one scene that I really really hope we get is the scene with and who knows because it'd be a lot of work probably, but when when Jamie takes Jenny to, well, they stop in Paris, like on their way um, back to America and um, they stop there in Paris, I think, maybe, or maybe it's just in Edinburgh. I can't remember, but um, she, she buys some stuff for herself and it's like, it was, I think it was Le Havre. It, okay. it was, it was a, cause they were, they were, there's a, a coast town. It might have been Lahav. I know what you're talking about. She was so excited because she used French with French people and like bought what she wanted. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. She's so and you, excited. You get this sense that she's like, which I think is hundred percent accurate, but you don't really realize it until you read the scene. But it's like, this woman has never purchased anything that wasn't in a catalog or in from some merchant in Rockmorta. Yeah, right? She's never like, been away from home. Never. And if you really think about it, Jenny has basically been a mother since she was eight years old when her, her mother died. Yeah. She eight or 10, eight, I think. It was like 10. I think it was 10. 10. Okay. And maybe Jamie was eight. So she's, she's been a mother. Then she, to her siblings and, you know, a caretaker for her father. Mm -hmm. And then she married Ian and she had a boatload of kids with Ian. And then they have a boatload of grandkids and, you know, they've, they've struggled a lot financially, especially after Culloden. Um, and she's never left, like the area that she lives in, like Lallybrock and Brockmorda, she's never been anywhere. And she's lived her whole life caring for other people and probably never doing anything for herself. And all of a sudden she's like ha getting that freedom for the first time in her life at, you know, in her what is she in her early fifties, late forties, early fifties? I think late fifties. Uh, she's late. She's a, late. Yeah, you're right. You're right. She's about Claire's age. You're right. Yeah. So it's amazing. It's just so heartwarming. And I really hope they show us that scene. I really hope they give that to us. Yeah. I would love to see that. I'm not looking forward to seeing her be really fucking mean to Claire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am. I'm sure you are. But <laughs> I do think, and there's been a lot of times that Jenny has been, I think, mean to Claire, but it was like warranted. Maybe not the, maybe it was a little disproportionate, but like it was warranted. But there's, there's some stuff that she says to Claire in Echo that is just kind of, downright mean but anyway so so we're gonna get the murrays uh we're gonna get joan mckimmy uh layla burns is gonna play joan mckimmy uh leary's back gonna be back which honestly she just brings such delicious drama to everything she i does. i'm i'm looking forward <laughs> to it and i want to meet her little caretaker lover person i hope they have him too um, I'm excited for that 
like I hope that we get this storyline the way it played out in the book with Joan more or less blackmailing her own mom kind of <laughs> while manipulating Jamie. It's fit. It's just masterful. Yeah. Masterful. I love it. Especially since the last time we've seen Joni, she was just this like cute little girl. Like I think it's the same actress. Is it? I think so. Could be. I didn't I didn't check that. Uh Graham McTavish is gonna be back, as is Lottie Verbeek as Galus Duncan, which tells me that we're actually gonna get a little bit of season or of book eight in season yeah. seven. Because they don't come back until Moby. Um, so that's interesting because they really didn't even finish book six. So they're going to have to finish book six, do all of seven, and they're going to be doing some of eight. So that's, it's a very ambitious season. Who we haven't seen cast though, Dottie and Minnie. Well, that's what I was going to go to next is, oh, before that, though, because I want to talk a lot about the Greys. Okay. <laughs> uh, they recast Buck McKenzie. Thank God. Love you, Graham. Yeah. But no. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris Fulton from Bridgerton, and he's been in a bunch of other stuff, too, is going to be playing Rob Cameron. So he's the guy in the 80s that uh, is a bad guy. Oh yeah, I was like, I know. Why do I know the name? But it's not. I had like Jacasta's late guy. Oh right, yeah. In my head. I'm like, it's not him. It's not him. Who the frick? You're right. Yeah. Oh. And he's so handsome, this actor. So I'm like, I don't uh -oh. know. We're gonna have problematic I'm, I'm, bad guy feelings. <laughs> no, no, not that. I just like, I kind of wanted to be Rob Cameron to be like kind of like on the same level as uh the the really bad dude in the one that marsley killed uh what the hell's his name brown yeah the like the browns like i wanted him to be more like the browns uh but you know we'll get we'll take what we can get and 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 Andrew Whip is back as Brian Fraser, which is also means that again we're going to get that stuff from season eight uh, or from book eight. But God, I I hope he hits the deck. That was <laughs> <laughs> what's that? The Fraser male penchant for fainting when they think they've seen a ghost is my. Oh yes. It's the, it's like Jamie being violently seasick is just the dumbest weakness. I love just oh like the God. weak constitution. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fan of flaws. I'm a fan of flaws. They haven't announced Black Jack Randall. Tobias Menzies coming back as Black Jack Randall. So I don't know if that's coming later or if they're going to work around that or what they're going to do. Or if it's going to be uh, a surprise. Right. Because it's really just a cameo. Yeah. Yeah. It's not much of anything, but. But it's a fantastic cameo because Roger is a badass in that scene. I love it. Yep. You can't hate. You can't see that and hate Roger. I, I am very excited to have Roger and Buck traipsing around in like the 1730s. Dark buddy comedy. And I really hope that they also have roger's father yes, too yes, they didn't yes. announce him but now they interestingly enough the last person that was announced is gloria obiano who's playing mercy woodcock yet we haven't seen any of the grays cast i don't remember who that is she is the free black woman who is taking care of one of is it Adam Gray one of Hal's sons that who was injured and they oh, fall in love oh yeah yeah how do we have her but not not any I, great that's like Hal's confused. not been announced like how Hal's not there Minnie's not there Dottie's not there he actually, the actor who plays Hal, somebody had asked him at some point on Twitter, 
if he was going to be filming and for Outlander and he said, I haven't been asked as of yet. And I, I mean, that was months ago, but you'd think he would have it on like the schedule. How am I supposed to keep shipping Jamie and Hal if I don't have the fodder? You know, and even with William, I mean, this is my season that's coming. Okay. This is (laughs) everything's coming up. Bethy. In season seven. However, if I do not get Hal, I am going to be crying into my Cheerios just a little bit because you know how much I love him. And I, I, so much of, I mean, I love him in the books, but the actor is so good and just think of his freaking name right now. But, um, but yeah, I, I want Minnie. I want, I want Minnie and Dottie and, even like the stupid cousins and, you know, William's cousins and stuff. Like I want, I want the grays. The drama with Dottie and William in the book is fantastic. Yeah. And it's just a prime. It's just a great, think of the character development opportunity we have to be able to, explore William's character in his childhood, which we didn't really get to see in the show at all, just in that brief couple of beats in yeah. the book where John gets the letter, he reads the letter, and he immediately assumes that William has knocked up his cousin Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> he, has like, he has like two thoughts, like, oh my God, he knocked her up, and then oh dear God, Hal is going to kill him and then me. (laughs) (laughs) He goes into complete survival mode in that moment. He does. And loses his fucking mind accosting his niece in public to demand to know if she's a virgin. (laughs) And she slaps the shit out of him. (laughs) I have listened to that scene in the audiobook probably four times, and it never ceases to make me laugh hysterically. Okay, and we're also getting Denzel and uh, Rachel. So yeah. how are how would we not be getting Dottie? Maybe they're waiting. Maybe they're, maybe they haven't because- found her yet, or they're pushing that back some. I don't know. Keeping it for well, season eight. I was going to say, they could be saving the whole shebang for season eight, right? Yeah. Because if, but do we even meet Mercy Woodcock in seven? I feel oh, like I we, don't know. Those books uh, have like completely blended together for me. I know. I have the hardest time between those two. I listen to them so fast. Yeah. Because... I re- definitely remember her from around the time of the battle outside of Philadelphia, which I'm drawing a total blank for some reason, but the one where the really bad thing happens. Uh, I can't think of Ma- uh, Monmouth, the battle of Monmouth. Um, really and that was in. Happens? Yeah. Where the title of the book comes from. Should I just say it? You might as well just say it because I'm drawing a fucking blank. <laughs> when Claire gets shot. Oh, yeah. And almost dies. Oh, uh, I did connect the dots now. Oh, now I can Jamie remember the title. His... Okay. And Jamie Jesus. loses his freaking mind. Um, Best I quit ever. Oh, my God. He, that should be like an icon for like the, like the, all the like quiet quitting, quote unquote. Oh, it was and not all, quiet. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and all the like, you know, like I, I, I follow a page on uh, Instagram and Twitter called like, fuck you, I quit. Like, yeah, that's what it is. The fuck you, I quit. <laughs> so Only Jamie but, could be accidentally commissioned as a fucking general. God damn. <laughs> the, pos- <laughs> the possible like thing that they could maybe be doing is saving all of the gray stuff for season eight, if we're going to get one, but that would like screw up 
the Denzel storyline. It would screw up William's storyline. But what it, it could do, think big picture here, think noble cause. It could allow the opportunity for a John Gray series spinoff backdoor pilot embedded within yes. the season. So did I mention somebody asked about that at Comic-Con when I we did our last episode? I don't know if we mentioned it on the podcast or yes. if it was just like we were chatting about it in Discord. But yeah, someone asked and Diana said nobody's nobody's interested in it yet. It's but things stars. can change. So but yeah, I mean things can change. So yeah. But I'm gonna just gonna say this now. So help me freaking God if we don't get the Claire John marriage and the freaking Claire John sex scene in season seven, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I've Fair been one. waiting. I have been waiting so long <laughs> to see that on the screen. And what I'd really like it to see is like a scene where both of them are picturing Jamie. So Jamie's actually like, so Sam's like in the scene with them because they're both imagining it. (laughs) That is if, if, if I were directing, which I should be, I don't know why you're not. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, lack of experience be damned. Lack of experience, (laughs) lack of, you know, training. (laughs) If I got hired to do like story running or like directing or anything on that show, I would walk into that room like Ron Swanson in Home Depot and just tear (laughs) everything away from people and be like, I know more than you. Get out of my room. I'm hiring new staff. And then I would hire you and my friend Jen and my friend Alyssa and Michaela and Ness. And, you know, you, you know, you, you could bring on a couple people if you wanted to. And I'd be like, this is the dream team. Okay. We've got this now. Anyway, I just have to say completely unrelated. I understood that reference because my husband <gasps> once explained it to me in a Lowe's. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never seen it, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel like Captain uh, America I understood that reference. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get to the fucking point? <laughs> sure. I mean, why start now? I know. <laughs> it's kind of me. I feel like we're making up for the last episode where even the characters were bored. Yeah. You're like, right before we started, you're like, oh, maybe we could make it a little shorter since we don't have any mail items this week. And I'm like, <laughs> famous last fucking words. Like, Hold oh. my beer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jesus. so uh, let's get into the episode then, because it's actually... A pretty big episode to unpack too. So. There's a lot in it for a change. It's kind of nice. This yeah. is maybe one of my favorite. Oh, I'm not even going to say it's my favorite one of the season because I don't fucking remember. But I do. I do like this one. 204 La Dame Blanche. So it's it's funny because I think I always mention that I feel like all of the Paris episodes just kind of blend for me. So I have trouble I distinguishing, and so. I kind of had forgotten that the whole thing with Claire being poisoned, not poisoned um, happens like right at the beginning. But before we even talk about the poison, not poisoning total new parent amateur hour discussing baby names in public, like, and for the first time, yeah, it's like they're arguing. (laughs) about it and it's so ridiculous like don't try this at home (laughs) people okay just decide on your baby name between you and your partner and you can announce it ahead of time if you want or not but do not be waffling around people because the second people see an inroad 
to they try to inject opinions. their opinion about your baby's name, they are mm-hmm. going to take it. And so, it's going to suck and it's going to make you self-conscious about every fucking thing you think of. And you're going to feel the need to pick something that somebody suggested, but then also violently hate. Yes. And you're going to be like, the name that you loved and that you picked for yourself is going to be just like tarnished if you're not sure of it. If you're sure of it and you guys are on the united front, nothing anybody says to you about that name will get you down. But if there's any waffling, you're done. So take that. That that piece of advice and more on our parenting podcast. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> People are like, they allow these two to be parents. <laughs> yeah, there's not a test or anything. Probably no, they should be, but there's no. not. No application, no adopt, you know, well, there's an adoption fee if you adopt, but like, you know, it's not like a puppy where they make you like, they come inspect your home and make sure you're going to be a fit pet parent. Like, they're just like, here. (laughs) Congratulations. Don't kill it. You just, you know, push this baby out of your vagina a day ago. Take it home and make sure you keep it alive. (laughs) Oh, this is going to be a long fucking episode. <laughs> yeah, I can, <laughs> I can feel, feel it already. Uh, we'll have to take, maybe we'll end up taking all the tangents out and just making them a separate episode. <laughs> but I'm going to leave in at least one and that statement so that everyone wonders. <laughs> that's how I roll. Uh, okay, so Claire gets poisoned not poisoned she gets ill technically it was being poisoned because she didn't do it herself so someone snuck something in her drink slipped her a mickey or something and then she gets carried out at a run but it does lead to her finally finally telling jamie that blackjack is still alive yeah but i have some thoughts on that (laughs) If we didn't have thoughts, we wouldn't have a podcast. That's true. (laughs) So I'm sitting, you know, and it's just now that we're so far into the podcast, I'm watching every episode with just such a more critical eye. And I don't mean critical in like, I'm trying to find like, you know, bad shit about it. I just mean like, like I'm really watching it carefully and thinking and analysis and stuff. But anyway, so I'm like. Just a couple episodes, it seemed like knowing he was dead was like his only comfort. Like when he was having nightmares and Claire was like, you know, he's dead. It's, you know, don't worry about it. He can't hurt you. Like it seemed like that was his only comfort unless that was just Claire's projection. Which could have been. Now, but now it seems like he's mad that he was dead because he didn't get to kill him which i suppose it's trauma you could be holding both yeah thoughts at the same time um but i was just like that that's a little weird (laughs) his vengeance arc though is Mm. for serious i i don't blame him for it like i don't hold it against him do it man yeah but it's it does kind of feel like it comes out of nowhere, but at the same time, I would wager. I'm going to say something not nice about Claire, um, but true. So <laughs> surprise, <deal with> <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Claire has not demonstrated that she is a safe place for him regarding his traumatic yeah. his processing of his trauma. So it's really no surprise that we're seeing this from Claire's perspective, and it looks like he's done a 180. Right. Yeah. And besides that, they've just both not been communicating well in general. So we just kind of are taking it from, like you said, from Claire's perspective Mm -hmm. that things are a certain way and Jamie hasn't said anything to contradict that up to this point. Yeah. And 
So we've got Laird and Lady Dumbass. <laughs> oh, and then Laird Dumbass, though, really comes out and says, now he's like, oh, I can kill him. Now I have something to look forward to as his pregnant wife <laughs> is sitting in front of him. I'm like, wow. Wow. Having a breakdown because she feels like she's all alone. Which, lady, this was your stupid idea. This was all your stupid idea, and now you're mad about it. That drives me crazy. Okay, but that was a dumbass thing for Jamie to say. Like, I would be pissed. For both of them. It was, yes, this whole situation is completely avoidable. (laughs) I I think that's what frustrates me so much about this season, is so much of this quote unquote conflict is 100% avoidable by basic communication. Well, if you hate this, wait till you get to book four. (laughs) God, I did not like, I don't like book four. I know. Well, I liked the book. I hated the season. It just felt slow. Anyway. Anyway. I we digress a lot again. But it does have one of my favorite episodes. So, but again, I digress. Um, so that actually leads us right to uh, the next Laird dumbass move. Um, <laughs> Jamie comes home very horny after spending time with a prostitute and <laughs> is just sees no issue with this. He's, I mean, he's just he's so happy that he finally feels like he can have sex with Claire that he doesn't even see why she's mad about the bites on his thighs. <laughs> I mean, talk about thinking with your penis. Oh, God. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> like, the downstairs brain was definitely getting more than its fair share of blood flow. I was going to say, all the blood in his brain <gasps> has gone directly to his his little soldier. And <laughs> that guy has a one-track mind. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's just... And he just keeps digging himself deeper. <laughs> it doesn't get better. The more he talks and the more he tries to explain why, no, this is a good thing, actually. It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> this is classic Jamie is a disaster. And I love it. I love it when Jamie's a disaster. Like, I... Just <laughs> there's, 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 there's this there's whole no scene, like so much of this scene, and then like I've got notes for us to talk about it later in a different segment. But this whole scene is just disaster by energy, <laughs> just himbo disaster by. That's that's what Jamie is, and in nowhere is it more clear than right here. It's oh on- my god, he's just. <sighs> Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. Fucking so wrecked, he's a disaster. Man. You know, before then he's they you know the disaster stops being funny and starts being <laughs> I feel like it's an episode of the real world. They stop being funny and start getting real. This week's episode of Outlander. Um you know, and he starts to talk about you know how he's been feeling and I have to say that I agree with you on Claire because you haven't you haven't written down your thoughts, but I know what you're thinking anyway. So <laughs> I, I agree with you that, you know, she's she's so selfish in this scene. Yeah. I understand that she is going through a lot, too, but she is completely dismissing how bad Jamie's trauma was is and he's like pouring his heart out to her you know and she's like then talk about it you know but like you said earlier she hasn't given him a safe place to talk about it because of what happened at the abbey yeah and you know, he's just been doing what he thinks he needs to do, which is just forge ahead like a good soldier and Bottle it pretend up, that everything's okay. Yep. You know? 
She's not giving um, him. She. I mean, she. He hasn't had five minutes to freaking breathe. He still hasn't had time to just breathe and exist as his own person again, because they get to fucking Paris and they immediately start doing this bullshit espionage, trying to change history, make you know Emmett Brown have a fucking heart attack. Bullshit. Like. <laughs> 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 they've gone on way too long it, it, he's what is he he's really busy doing stuff he doesn't really want to be doing sacrificing his morals and his personal values and she doesn't want to hear about it no and you know like i said she is going through her own shit you know yeah. pregnancy pregnancy isn't amazing well some people think it's amazing i did not think it was amazing but when you look and it's not a competition, but come on, like, yeah, this is the reason he's not getting attached to the idea of the baby and talking about it and stuff is all because of his trauma that he has not processed yet and has not had a safe place to process it. So it's like, let's fix that problem and then, you know, I think the other problem will take care of itself. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. So they're both pretty du- pretty big dumbasses um, in this episode. And, yeah. I mean, I, I, I could talk about, like, how much I love the f- whole fortress, you know, metaphor and stuff. But it it's just, he pours his heart out to her and you know she's just like what about me you know so the next thing that happens though is you know jamie goes off to sleep by himself uh but claire does show up yeah and yeah, she goes after him which you know sex is her love language so <laughs> yeah. uh, <Yep. laughs> i'm not even gonna say physical touch it's just sex is her no love it's language. sex specifically so but this scene is just so many things wrong about it. Just, I will give it one thing. It has a very good, some very good nippleage suckaging. But <laughs> <laughs> other than that, the blue light is so ridiculous. I feel like I've seen so many uh, gifs of it where they've fixed the color that I was like almost jarred when I saw how really, really blue the fucking scene is. <laughs> it's really, really I, blue. Yeah. So, I mean, I think part of it is maybe an allusion to the blue light that we don't even know about yet. The blue light special. Yeah. The blue light special. But also at one point when I think like, I don't know if it was Ron or Matt or Meryl were asked about the, the hot springs scene and why they didn't include that. They said that the blue light in the, this scene was supposed to like kind of represent them being underwater or something. I, it's, it's dumb. Oh. Okay. <laughs> You're just like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I think this scene, it could have definitely <laughs> benefited from an intimacy coordinator. Well, and not only, yes, and not only that, but the camera angles just makes it looks like I'm watching like Big Brother room cam footage. Like, and I haven't watched Big Brother in freaking years, but I remember in the early years of that show when you could like pay to watch like extra videos on the... <laughs> on the internet and like they would be there would be a camera on the ceiling so there would be like there'd be people hooking up from but you'd see it from like the top down that was a thing i never watched before i hate reality tv i mean i think it's still a thing i think they but i'm sure it's like way more sophisticated and whatever now but yeah you used to be able to pay and you could watch like 24 hour feed of the thing which i did one summer and then i was like well that was a waste because i'm not gonna sit there and watch this fucking thing all day (laughs) 
Ew. But any, yeah. Mm. But anyway. So yeah, and the reason they did the camera angle like that, and you can see it if you're watching carefully, is because they didn't want to do the scars on Jamie's back. So yeah. they only shot it like really up close and from the s- ceiling, which I just, ugh, so disappointing. After all that time, they haven't had sex in forever, and then that that's what we get. <laughs> no, no... You know, nothing against the actors. They did a great job with what they mm-hmm. ha- were given. It was just weirdly written. The direction, the camera angles, just not good. Anyway. So, um, speaking of things that are not fun, uh, Claire and Mary and Marta are walking home from the hospital because the carriage wheel broke. That was fucking convenient. Yeah, right. Um, so that poor Mary could be sexually assaulted. I just, why? So, So, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I was going to say, so just to back up, because we kind of skipped a whole thing and I just want to, in case people have forgotten or anything like that. So Jamie and Claire decide that they're going to throw this dinner party because they realize Mm. that uh, Louise and... Uh, the Bonnie Prince Charlie have been having an affair. So they're going to try to have a, a, uh, a dinner party to kind of show to trigger the Bonnie Prince so they can show everybody what an asshole he is. Yes. And Sorry. I'm jumping around. <laughs> no, we didn't make any notes about it either. So I just wanted to like make sure people were tracking. That's up. so yeah. it was, there was a time sensitive situation where Claire needed to be home Um, she conveniently had to be at the hospital helping because the armory exploded or there was an explosion at the armory. It wasn't the whole armory. That would be really bad. (laughs) So she went to help and it ran, they were late. And then when they, they get ready to leave, the carriage wheel is busted. And so they have to walk home because triple A wasn't a thing. No, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, yeah. And like you said, they, um, pretty brutal rape scene uh, of Mary, rape of Mary. They also a little bit of Claire, but they actually stop raping her when somebody says she's La Dame Blanche. Um, and but the it it's awful to watch. I couldn't. I turned away. Like I looked away. Um, yeah, it's just it, it's again so unnecessary. Like, remember, she's like 15. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the actress isn't 15, obviously, but like, you know, the character is like 15 years old and it's terrified of the concept of sex. Yeah. So, so we get to watch her being, you know, raped. And it's just, why is Outlander obsessed with rape? <laughs> Can we please make it stop? My thought on this was, okay, what's the narrative? What's the narrative purpose for this? And you can, we've, we've talked about this ad nauseum. You can show that someone is evil without making them a perpetrator of sexual violence. You can show Mm -hmm. that someone is vulnerable without making them a survivor of sexual violence. There's all kinds of things you can do to not include this content Yet, they continue to choose to do it and say historical accuracy, which bullshit. So maybe, okay, it's because they needed Mary to be at the house because they had to set off this fight at the end of the dinner party. Right. Literally could have been any other reason. Right. I mean, she could have been just sick and delirious. Yeah. she could And have been Alex poisoned. could have been taking care of her. Yeah. She, yeah. She could have been poisoned. There's any number of reasons why they could have found Mary and Alex in what is seemingly a compromising position or where he could be, you know, it could be interpreted that he's attacking her or whatever without her having been completely traumatized. And it's, you know, like you said, we, you can tell characters vulnerable without having them raped. I mean, it was clear that Mary was vulnerable. I mean, yeah. 
we didn't need any other freaking evidence. Um, yeah, we we didn't need any more. Like she was already well established as kind of frail in stature, in physicality, in like emotional constitution. Like mm -hmm. that was already well established. Yeah, there was no need for all of that there were it okay if is it going to be so that she doesn't have to marry you know what's his nuts so that she can have her she can have her romance with alex well no that really doesn't, i mean also not necessary yeah i mean ugh, exactly and lazy storytelling it is lazy storytelling you're right and it's just I mean, to constantly be using rape as the vehicle to move your plot from point to point is just, it's lazy mm -hmm. and it really just kind of becomes despicable. I'm going to come out and say it. If your plot is that dependent on rape to move it forward, you need a new plot because your plot sucks. And if that is... If, if you, I don't know, write out of order and you need mm. things to like connect the dots, if the only thing you can ever freaking come up with to connect the dots is a rape, you need to seek help. Maybe don't write out of order then because it's clearly not for you. <laughs> I just, I, I just stunning the way that the it seems like the only way we can get from point a to point b is by the vehicle of a rape yeah and and honestly i don't even think of this one much when i'm thinking about all the great rapes of outlander you know like uh and i mean great yeah. sarcastically um i i kind of had forgotten this happens and then it's like right there in your face like oh shit you know it's just gross. It is. But we do finally have an interesting dinner party after all of the dinner parties in season one that were <laughs> horrible, <laughs> terrible, cringy, like God make it stop. We finally have an entertaining one. It's still yeah. cringy, to be clear. To be clear, it is still cringe, <laughs> like major cringe, because you've got Sandringham in the room, you've got the Comte saint Germain in the room, you've got the Bonnie Prince Charlie in the room, Louise is there, but now it starts to get interesting because there's all these terrible people, and they're at odds, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's perfect, really. It's like, you know, it Sandringham, is. Sandringham is ridiculous. So is Charlie. Charlie's ridiculous. <laughs> like speaking. Okay, speaking of Charlie, I'm. This is a Ness. This is a message for you. There were three Mark Me's in this episode. Mm. Are we keeping count? I was. Okay. I remember we <laughs> talked about keeping count, but I can't remember. There were three we in this did. episode. It rapid fire too. It felt like yeah, you know, within twenty minutes. And I'm just like <laughs> mock me. Mark me. <laughs> and then you've got Sandringham. Oh, I guess I've just never found a woman who would put up with me. <laughs> Gee, I wonder fucking why. Is it because you're terrible? <laughs> you know, and, and the Comte is just being like, just doing his best evil guy, right? Oh, like, he is such a bitch. He's just a bitch. Steadfast evil guy. Like, you know... And just like when the, you know, at the, in the fight scene is great. Okay. You've it got is. Jamie and Myrta working together, doing their thing. And, and I didn't give proper credit to during the, the dinner and the planning of the dinner, just to how good Jamie and Claire are when they're in sync and communicating. And, yeah. you know, they are just like such a, awesome devious little team <laughs> like when they're they're firing and you know with all pistons or whatever so um absolutely love it the fight scene's amazing until of course it ends with what looks like 
to everybody else, Mary being raped. <laughs> the fight is entertaining. The fight is actually really, it's really fun. And I don't know if that was like me genuinely just enjoying it because something is fucking happening finally, or if it was the music or both. It may as probably both. <laughs> I, it is. It's really fun. Like, I think it's like you have Jamie, like, or maybe it's Claire tossing something to Murta or Jamie to be as Claire a tossed the like, rope to Jamie. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and he caught it and turns right around and starts hog tying some dude. I'm- <laughs> See, they're so good when they're in sync. When they're communicating, uh, they're good. This was fun. They should have done this from the start. And I know. Like, you know what? Don't worry about trying to stop the rising. Just keep having dinner parties. It's more entertaining. Yeah. um but of course it ends with the comte and uh the bonnie prince making friends and the comte decides to uh have the gendarme uh called to end the the fight uh snitches get stitches comped okay that's all i have to say to you we don't we don't call the police for stuff like this okay they had it handled you little freaking weasel uh <laughs> <laughs> and you will get yours i promise so yeah yeah they have one dinner party and the cops get called <laughs> just one one little rager <laughs> it's the chaotic phrasers at their best so you know? chaotic <laughs> love it so i pop some notes in here and this is kind of a less of a point counterpoint i just really wanted to pick this apart with you okay. i don't know that you're gonna have too much to argue about <laughs> so <laughs> the 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 kind of sort of argument that jamie and claire have after he comes home horny with his legs all bit up i watched it twice today because as he's talking, I'm going, there's not a straight explanation for what he's saying. It really did kind of sound like he was coming out to Claire, maybe not really recognizing that that's what he was doing. Because his monologue about this fortress sounded a little bit like a guy who's had the door blown off of his closet. Mm. Yeah, I, it does. It's very, very like coded in that way. Mm-hmm. And, but I don't, I like, I think I agree with you that I don't think that's a conscious thing on Jamie's part. No. And it sure wasn't intentional on the part of the writers, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but it does sound that does sound what it sounds like, you know? And- Yeah, there's also some words and some imagery in there that kind of foreshadows what he says to Claire to explain that his his totally straight, absolutely no homo explanation for offering (laughs) to bang John in Voyager. That's some of the exact same freaking language. And it also brings and of course, you can't think about jamie trying to have sex with his quote-unquote friend not his lover definitely not no, definitely no, not no. his lover definitely, definitely not. just platonic thank you sex definitely platonic thank you sex after all of the wild kinky sex they had in ireland <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by harold gray but face of Carlo. <laughs> <laughs> but it also you can't think of that and then not think of that bug up his ass that the jamie has in bees thinking about john while he's having sex with his wife <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to think about that claire because then i might think about me having sex with him because that's totally straight and logical it's normal that's <laughs> I've run that by straight men and it's not didn't pass the test. <laughs> did not pass the test. <laughs> didn't pass the <this> test. <laughs> They're like the vibes are off here. <laughs> the vibes are pink, purple, and blue. <laughs> 
See, this is another example of Jamie just like being by, like all on his own, can't control it. <laughs> so Diana admitted that John was accidentally gay. He came up that right. way. Right. Yes. Which just totally, I think, proves our theory. We that can go with proof. <laughs> she didn't. I'm going with proof. Yeah. That she didn't intend for Jamie to be bi. Yes. And he, he just <laughs> is so freaking bi. It jumps off the goddamn page. Mm-hmm. And, but sh- because he is her, you know, supposed to be her hetero, you know, sexy man, ladies man, like hero, she just continues to, and because she just doesn't have an open mind about these things and probably thinks that if you're bi, that means you have to divorce your wife so you can like sleep with other men. Uh. Um, (laughs) So she, I lost my train of thought. So anyway, so she fights. So she just is in deep, deep denial about it. Where with John, it was fine. And it was interesting to her to have a character that was gay in that time period because it was illegal and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. So, oh, she's like, oh, a gay I can really torture. I'll keep him. (laughs) So there's some stuff in this episode that don't make sense. Do you want to go first? Yes. Um, okay. So we already talked in like episode 202 or some, or 203. I can't remember about how far Paris is from Versailles and how long it would take by carriage ride. So mm-hmm. you're telling me that Claire, when she was uh, doubled over in stomach pain and like dying of being poisoned uh, that they got in a carriage and rode six hours back to Paris <laughs> with her in that condition. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and in the book, they do stay at Versailles. So um, yeah, I, uh... <laughs> and we didn't <laughs> even get like a highway, like montage. no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know this season is seriously lacking in highway montages it's just like <laughs> there's just so like many opportunities they, they beam back and forth from you know <laughs> beam me up snotty um <laughs> did you say <laughs> you said did you say snotty i did from space balls oh <laughs> snotty beam him up um, i never really watched star trek but i watched space balls so i was listening for star trek i was really surprised by space ball <laughs> <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to knock you off kilter there um this whole episode is off kilter it's fine <laughs> those are my those end up being my favorite episodes though but yeah. anyway um And you had one, too. Yeah, explain this one to me like I'm five. Claire, I'm not a witch, Beecham, Randall, Fraser, Gray. Sure put a lot of stock in divination (laughs) with Master Ramon. (laughs) I have questions about someone who's not born yet. Yeah, sure. Let's put some sheep knuckles onto the zebra pelts. (laughs) And I'm going to let that absolutely tell me what's going to happen. About my and future. Believe it. I believe it because I like Master Raymond. He wears cool waistcoats and he looks kind of like a frog. That's <laughs> having your fortune told by a frog, but you don't believe in changelings. <laughs> make it make sense. Just some consistency well, in the character would be nice. I know. She's. I, it's it's like she only believes in that stuff like when it's convenient for her, right? When like, it's so, when it's convenient for Diana, when it's true. convenient uh, for the plot, she believes in it. Otherwise, oh, I'm too smart, well, you know, worldly for that. 1945, blah blah blah. God. <laughs> 
Oh my God. Yeah. Well, so it was one of those scenes that was like really kind of fun. The first time like, Oh, ooh, mystery intrigue. <laughs> Although we already know this because you've already fucking seen him. So we know he, she's going to see Frank again. And so now it's just like, well, why does she give two shits? Right. She. Uh, okay. Well, it just plays into her whole narrative. Um, for one second, though, I'd like to talk about the fact that anybody who watched this show on Netflix as like their first time watching this show always knew that Claire was going to go back because for the longest freaking time, the like screen cap on Netflix was her like in the 60s yeah. with Frank at Brianna's graduation. Like, hello, just- spoilers at Netflix. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I will anyway. say Stars has had um because I've been I've just been watching it on Stars. I I have Netflix too, but I think I'm trying to justify to myself continuing to pay for Stars. So I've been doing the rewatch on Stars and they've had um uh Tom Christie as like the face of Outlander <laughs> for <laughs> most of 2022. <laughs> Somebody told me that like it changes now based on like what people think your or what the Netflix algorithm thinks is your like preference. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I when was the last time I turned on Netflix. I think it was probably trying to find something for my kid to watch. <laughs> so oh my about. god. Yeah. So I have so I got stars again for season six and I got the deal six months for twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. And then I went to cancel it in September and they were like, don't go take another six months for $20. So I was like, okay, like, shit. Yeah. So I'm just putting that out there. Definitely do not try to cancel your membership. Yeah. (laughs) Don't do that to see that. That would be bad. It's like, don't call Comcast and threaten to not have Comcast anymore. Yeah. (laughs) Don't do that. It's wrong. Totally fucking yeah. do it. <laughs> All right. There, there goes another sponsor. <laughs> Fuck them. Okay. So you have a non canon ship that I'm not going to like. No one's so going to like this. I'm, no. I want to hear this. It's cursed as shit. Jamie, the Comte. So at Versailles, there was some like over the chip. Why are you laughing, Beth? This is serious. <laughs> okay, I'm listening very seriously. No, you're not. I can hear you. <laughs> so over over the chess game, there was just a little. There was a little something. A little, little tension. Of a sexual nature? <laughs> it wasn't sexual. It he was. was just pissed at the dude because he no. threatened his wife. <laughs> no. No. Let me have my garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, Oscar. <laughs> I am going to trash panda this shit. It, there, th- all I'm... All I'm saying is there was enough in that couple of minutes before, you know, Claire thinks she's dying. There was enough for probably a 2000 word, just hate bang. <laughs> nothing, I mean, who, does, who, who doesn't love a good hate bang? I mean, I, I just, I look pick. forward to them. There. See? So... Let that image rock you to sleep tonight. Oh, can we Jamie, talk about John? <laughs> Jamie. Either railing or getting railed by the comps on your mind. I don't know which is worse. I mean, they can take turns. Outside of the context of Outlander, just if it was just like their two bodies. <laughs> I, I mean, 
that yes that image is yes um <laughs> with the wigs <laughs> let them fall off <laughs> and his little like walking stick <laughs> god hey. no no hey. no 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 hey. no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> forget i said that Erase. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Okay. So now if I anyone have... would like to write that, I would be so flattered if you gifted it to me on AO3. <laughs> I don't think anybody can write that except you, Pan. I don't not think gonna... anyone can write that except you. <laughs> I don't want to write it. I just want to read it. <laughs> oh, my God. Just throw okay. that out there. I, we need a palate cleanser. So what's John up to? <laughs> um, Let me get my head out of that gutter and move it to another one. <laughs> move up the street a bit. <laughs> I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can salvage this. <laughs> um, I would so, like to think that John has met Hector by now. I, I it's it's possible, right? Because we're getting closer to um, Culloden to the to the rising, I should say. Yeah, Culloden still a ways away. away. Yeah, but we're getting closer to the rising, so um, Hal would is definitely, I think, rallying his getting together his um, command and um, getting ready to go into the highlands. And we're pretty sure that John met Hector in London before they went to the highlands. So. Yeah, hopefully they're they're meeting and being all like bashful with each other. Like, I like the idea know. of them being cute. I know, just like you know, John being because like you know, Hector's a little bit older than him, and mm -hmm. he, um, John really looked up to him. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's he's like his inspiration for being a soldier and stuff. So I can just picture, um. Hector, like, I don't know, telling soldiering stories and John just like looking at him with like the biggest heart eyes, just like taking it all in, like, and they're still like, you know, at the phase where they're just like brushing hands accidentally and then being like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I like the idea of Hector bringing, like, inviting John for dinner oh yeah you know because his mom his mom really it, likes john this is my friend john mm. just good friends nothing to see here but of course <laughs> i i really i would put money on it that hector's mom knew probably yeah yeah well, I mean, she seems like she was pretty close yeah. to John. Yes. So. I mean, she was yeah, reminding right. him to get, like, linen underwear <laughs> before he goes to, to Jamaica. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, you're probably right. Like, um, he probably did spend some time at their house, you know, yeah, having dinners and just hanging out. And just the thought of all that happiness for John just makes me a little like weepy. Just all of that love and happiness and new love and yeah. after everything he's been through so far, just he deserved that little little bit of little piece of love and heaven or whatever you want to call it. That was a wild 180 from the... <laughs> previous segment <laughs> i told you i needed a palate cleanser <laughs> <laughs> do 
Did you put any DOA, any, any fix on your DOA list this week? No, nope. I've been I'm... pretty not feeling well. So my yeah. brain has been a little foggy. <laughs> I thought I had, but of course I didn't write it down. So it doesn't count. I've also been working. I'm doing plotting and planning and stuff for nano next month. Mm. So I'm buried in a sea of post-it notes. Not been thinking it, about with it. With nano, later. with nano, do you have to start, you have to start fresh, right? Like you can't work on something you already started. I think you can, but it's 50,000 words in the month of November. That's so much. It is. It is 1,667 words a day, seven days a week. Mm. <laughs> and I this really is why have... I will not be writing. This is why I won't be writing fic next month. <laughs> I really need to pick up and start working on my novel again. But I have not been properly inspired to continue so far lately so yeah i don't know we'll see it's a good opportunity to do it this is the first time i've actually done nano yeah i've never done it i had a friend that used to do it years ago and i never i've done camp nano i've done smaller things but i've not done the fifty thousand words so Mm. we'll see how it goes but okay so no no dead on arrival fix Hey, guys, listeners, if you've got one, send it to us. We can talk about it. Yeah, let us know your fic ideas. We didn't get any mail call, any mail to call or whatever. Um, <laughs> so, you know, please, we'd love to hear from you. Um, we do have a fic rec this week. Yes. Chosen because of the pandemic of biting that was going on in this episode. So Jamie <laughs> comes home with his his thighs all bitten and um prince charles shows up and his he's got a bite on his hand and even claire is like oh this is going around something <laughs> water <laughs> and then jamie tea. gives her jamie gives her this look like oh she'll never let me live that down like it didn't just happen you know three oh, hours five. ago <laughs> it's five minutes ago <laughs> <laughs> like oh the wife huh, right <laughs> take my wife please <laughs> but because um, of all the biting we thought a vampire fic would be good yes so we are recommending sins of the flesh by precious little ingenue and um it's 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 so good um it's unfinished i'll say that um but it's so nobody uh, hassle her Yes. Do just go read not, it. Just and say how much and you love it and don't ask. Yes. Don't even ask. Don't we'll, we'll come for you. Um it's so good. It's just hot, sexy vampires as they're always meant to be, just like bisexual vampires that just like live in this like house together and just like have sex with each other and so there's like like there's it's got bisexual claire it's got john who's she's she's married to john and like that's like the first established relationship um i love when it starts that way i know me too when john's not the outsider i love it i'm so weak for that um it's got innocent virginal jamie it's got uh louise and claire getting hooked up together sometimes like just as her like casual you know when she wants to be with a woman um and it's it's just it's really good and it's just yeah it's if you want sexy vampires sexy gay vampires that is the fic for you. And like I said to Pan earlier today, all vampires are gay and the ones that aren't are lying. It's true. It's very true. Are I mean, I, I, around long enough? I firmly believe that all vampires are bisexual. Like in, if, they, if they're not homosexual, they're bisexual. There's yeah. They're or pansexual or what have you. Like Something. they're all queer. They're all queer. Yes. 
Yes. So anyway. So that's that. That wraps that up, huh? I think so. <laughs> I don't know what to, to, to make of tonight, but uh, good show. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of laughing. I One of these weeks we're going to have to do a teaser that's just, just nothing laughing. but us cack- just cackling. This week on Lord John Lander. <laughs> I think, you know, we, we, we actually had like quite a few moments where we could not stop laughing in this episode, you know, but I chugged tea as we were getting on to record <laughs> after 9 PM. Uh, this is fine. It's fine. It's all fine. It's all fine. We're all very, right. very fine. Everyone's fine. <laughs> Thank you everyone for listening. Um, Love that we get to spend an hour or so ish, <laughs> ish with you every week. Um, we definitely want to hear from you. Please reach out to us on Twitter, Tumblr, at Lord John Lander, or of course on our WordPress, lordjohnlander.wordpress.com slash contact us if you'd like to send us some mail. Send us your fic Rex if you'd like, even if it's yours. We would love to help promote your stuff. Um, if you've got a, a fic that you put on your dead, uh, dead on arrival list, let us know. We can talk about it. And then you feel like you, you can feel like you've shared it. If you want to be kept yeah. anonymous, please let us know that. Um, and, and tell us you love us or tell us that we're crazy. Um, don't be mean. But if you disagree with us about something we said, tell us that too. Um, I disagree with Pan sometimes. She disagrees with me. It's all good. You know, and just- we're st- and we're still friends i know amazing right who knew i mean i thought that was fake but it actually can happen it's who knew it sounded fake but it's not (laughs) the secret i'll tell i'll tell you guys this the secret to a good friendship in fandom is being willing to share your garbage ass ships with each other (laughs) and make them think about sweaty Jamie and sweaty Comte Saint-Germain. <laughs> you had to do it. You had to do it. I am if, if I have a dream about them tonight, I am calling Ned Gowan and I'm suing the pants off of you. Okay? Just just know that. <laughs> Sweet dreams. (laughs) Bye, everyone. (laughs) If you're listening to this, it means you survived another episode of Lord John Lander. We'd love to hear from you on Twitter or Tumblr at Lord John Lander or on our website at lordjohnlander.wordpress.com slash contact us. All opinions expressed on the Lord John Lander podcast belong to us and are not affiliated with Outlander, Sony, Stars, and definitely 100% not with Diana Gabaldon. This podcast is not suitable for children, immature adults, homophobes, anyone who takes fandom seriously, people who don't understand that the characters aren't real, people with sticks up their ass, people who hate fun, and people with no sense of humor. Do not try any of these hot takes at home. We are professionals. And if you know us in real life, no you don't.